back to fishing off the hook. And this right here is our bass fish tank. We have a bass and a bluegill in there. And today, we want this is like a new idea for us. So today we wanted to show you how you can do this for yourself and how we can feed feed your pet bass. Let's take a look. Okay, so first is the tank. You'll need a big tank. This one's 20 gallons, which is like plenty for us. So we got is two fish. And then you'll need a large filter that will fit, uh, that will work for your size tank. It should say on the box. And you're going to need at least, at least an inch of rocks on the bottom. Those are special kind of rocks. Special rocks for the you need to get special rocks yeah. for live plants, okay? But you so don't you have need to get have live plants. the live plants aren't a requirement. <laughs> I've seen other people with no plants in their tank that have pet bass, but, but it looks cool. I think they like it more, and it, it, it looks, looks cool. awesome. it looks like a pond in there, okay? So it looks cool. And so and you need to get special rocks yeah. for that tank, and you need at least an inch on the bottom, yeah, because they they root in and, and stuff. So make sure you treat the water. Make sure for sure. Oh yeah, you've if got. Not, they'll die. Just sure. treat it. We we treated ours with regular. This is like goldfish stuff, stress coat, whatever, aloe vera. That's just, we coat it with regular goldfish um, water treatment. It works fine because they're not dead. So, <laughs> and there you go. And make sure that you have a uh, sturdy thing to put the, the tank on that's going to hold the weight. It usually it says an approximate weight. And of make how much sure it's every once in a while you clean this little filter thing off right here. Yeah. Because it gets stuck in there. There's basic. Uh, other fish care stuff to do like with the filter and everything just buy new filters all that kind of stuff but yep. what we do for our bass and bluegill is we just we, we actually just buy um, filters and replace the filters so we actually haven't taken we haven't taken them out and cleaned the tank yet so I don't know maybe we don't need to usually some a little bit of algae is okay because it's like a lake in there so it's a, yeah. And now the next segment, feeding your pet bass and bluegill. So what we have actually is we have a little uh, goldfish jar. Okay, so we buy these goldfish like for 10 cents. We buy the little ones for the bluegill and the medium sized and large ones for the bass. Okay, and they seem to know which one's for them. I'm not sure how, but now I'm going to give a demonstration of how you feed so you, you might need a little net to take them out of your little jar. Yeah, it's a good tip but is to have a fish net. You don't need it. Fish net so you can Here we go. Okay, so this guy is this like is an albino. he's like an albino goldfish. Special kind of goldfish. Look at that. Okay. Now we're just gonna drop him bass in there in front of the bass. Keep the camera on the bass. Oh, oh dude. gone instantly. See Did that? You see that? <coughs> oh, God. So they do really, really like live fish. Guys, they like to have the fish swim around and they like to go chase it. As you can see, he took it right away. Now Ryan's going to demonstrate how we can feed your bluegill specifically. And sometimes the bass will take the bluegill's food, so this is why we also feed them crickets. Crickets. Because the bluegill seems to snap, <clears throat> nab the crickets quicker than the bass. You does. buy a dozen at the store for like dollar, dollar yeah. fifty. They and don't they cost give you, too much. They give you more like twenty if you buy a dozen. Or yeah. Crickets, good deal, definitely. Cheap food for the for the bluegill. So, and the bass sometimes eats them, but usually I think the bluegill sips them up before he does. So, I think the bluegill prefers top water anyway, top water kind of things. This one anyway, the specific ready? one. So now we're gonna demonstrate. He's got a cricket. Just this is what we do. You have to ready. You toss him in like he fell in the water, and oh, oh. did, did he get him? him? He got he him. Got him. That's right. See that? He's trying oh, to get him down. He choked him. Oh! Oh! Ooh! Fight! 
We should feed him. Like I said, sometimes the bass takes the food, so you have to make sure the bluegill gets so to eat too. If this happens, you just if you have a bass and a bluegill like we do, you have to make sure the bluegill gets to eat too. So Otherwise that one was a little bit too big for his mouth. Why don't you get a smaller one so he can actually swallow it and not spit it out? Because he was he was choking a little bit on that one. But here you go. Now he'll get it. Ah, oh, there you go. Come on now. There you go. He's got it now. So anyway, that's how you feed your bluegill and your bass, guys. It's really fun. It's kind of cool to watch them chase stuff in there. And it's really fun. It's, just, it's really neat to have like these live plants, too. It makes it look like a real, a real habitat. And I think they really like it in there. They're really comfortable. The first day, they were kind of they just sit around. Uh, motionless for a little while. But once they got used to it and they, they started to realize, hey, we're getting a lot of free food here. So. Oh, yeah, a little, a little story. So before we got their bass and bluegill, we had to let this get the plants grow and all that stuff. So we had ten goldfish in there. Right, we had ten goldfish before we put those guys in. Four. Of and we put them in there just like they were they were supposed to be food originally, but we just wanted to see if we could let them grow a little bit and get healthier before. Five small, four medium, and one large. Yeah. So first day we put our bass and bluegill in there. They were still there till. It's a little bit funny actually. They were yeah. they were all on this side right here. All the goldfish the congregated over here. Movie. Bass and bluegill were motionless, as I said before. So, so they kind of sat over here for a while. So we watched the movie, we videotaped and all that, but they didn't eat them. So, so they didn't we, eat. We went to bed. That night, we woke up in the morning. All the fish were gone. Every, every single one. Every last goldfish Ten gone goldfish, from the tank zero completely. Goldfish. Okay, so. Uh, and you don't overfeed yeah. them. <laughs> we, <laughs> we, we learned that day that you can't overfeed these guys. So that's, that's one of the key important things you can't you can't feed them like 10 go you can't put 10 goldfish in at once like that they will eat them all so that's why we did this yeah that's why we did the separate tank little little vase for the goldfish so yep. you gotta have goldfish food and for them too and and if the goldfish die you can still feed them they yeah. just float on top of the dish. yeah if the goldfish we had a couple of them that died passed away we just threw them in there they sink down and they eat them so or they, they still, still like them still. yeah either way and that's about it we have to say. If you have any questions or comments on um, our, our bass and bluegill tank or your own, please feel free to comment. Oh, one more quick thing. If you have live plants, guys, you have to have a light. The lady at the pet store told us that the light um, helps them survive. So otherwise they'll don't, start to shrivel. You don't need those things that sit on top of you. You just get a desk lamp. And yeah, we don't, we don't have a, a fancy LED light. We have desk lamp right here but that seems to be enough because their plants are doing great actually they're all green and everything so anyway questions comments please feel free so thanks for tuning in today see you next time on fishing off the hook